Hey everyone, hope you're having a good weekend so far. Um, if you're new to the channel, thank you for checking us out. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can keep updated on all the cool stuff I cover on the channel. And a shout out to any new subscribers as well. Got a high five planned for today. And if you're not aware of what this series is on my channel, it is just a few quick brief topics that I cover that are not really quite enough for a video on their own. So I cover each topic briefly. <laughs> so we got some Rebel Moon stuff to talk about today some a uh, little bit of Henry Cavill kind of you know it's out there so might as well just go ahead and talk about it as well as Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom and also the first look at the live action Snow White movie we got an image from that too so I'm gonna talk briefly about that too so let's get started with Rebel Moon Rebel Moon part one a child of fire has officially been rated 15 by the BBFC the British Board of Film Classification I don't really know how their rating system works but I'm assuming it's equivalent to like a PG-13 rating um, here in the States. Additionally, the film has been given a runtime of 134 minutes, which we talked about the runtime in previous videos too, and a release date of December 15th, 2023, potentially hinting at a theatrical run for the UK because it's coming out December 22nd on Netflix. So in the past, when Netflix did limited theatrical runs for some of their other films, including Zack Snyder's other Netflix movie, Army of the Dead, it was released a week before the Netflix release date. Does this mean we're getting a theatrical run for Rebel Moon? I, for Rebel Moon, I really, really hope so. If they announce a theatrical run at Netflix Geek Week in a couple of, you know, coming up very soon for Rebel Moon, that would just be awesome. It would just be the icing on the cake. And I really hope they do this. I don't think I don't think that they would doubt the potential of having this movie in theater. Hopefully they can get the strike all worked out and all of that stuff because the strike right now, the writer's strike, that got taken care of. But for the Screen Actors Guild, that strike is, they're still trying to negotiate all of that. And hopefully they can get that taken care of so that way the actors the cast members can promote the movie because right now under that strike they can't promote it on social media they can't do interviews about it they can't do appearances for it nothing like that i mean for other reasons too you know but especially since this movie is coming out in you know it's coming up pretty soon just in december so i really hope that we get a theatrical run i mean that would just be absolutely amazing the scale of this movie both movies and potentially beyond that just i think really need to be seen in theaters <laughs> So this December 15th UK release date, hopefully that's hinting at a theatrical run. But like I said, if they do some kind of announcement at Geeked Week, I hope you, I hope you're, I hope, please Netflix, come on, give us a theatrical run. Just a couple of weeks or something, something. But you know, just wanted to share that update on Rebel Moon. Going back to the prequel comic that was announced, I covered that on the channel if you wanna get caught up on that for Rebel Moon. Um, it is available for pre-order. You can pre-order it at your local comic shop or through online comic retailers. So check to see where comics are sold on your area online and should be available for pre-order. So yay. Getting into Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, it is currently on the um, new cover of Empire Magazine. So there's a couple of images coming out from that. Cool cover, very cool cover image. Interesting look at Black Manta as well. I think he has some of the best shots in the trailer too. Now, once again, the release date for Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom has been moved. Nothing significant. It's only been moved by two days. So it's going to be December 20th, now it's December 22nd. There were some other movies shuffled around too. And I think it, a lot of it has to do with the strike that's going on. But just hopefully that sticks. Like, you know, I don't think they want to keep moving it. It's been moved several times. And even if it's only a couple days, you know, just hopefully it can just get released <laughs> once and for all. And one of the things that I think a lot of us maybe have been wondering about Aquaman and Lost Kingdom is whether or not Batman is going to show up. We know that Ben Affleck filmed some scenes for this film and we kind of assumed that it was going to replace the Michael Keaton scenes. There's been a question like, are there going to be any, is Batman in any, of any version going to be in Aquaman? And one of the article, one of the articles I covered, one of the interviews that James Wan did about that, he's, you know, he kind of wasn't going to put that out there. He wasn't going to answer it. He's like, I'm just going to kind of save that for the movie. You're going to have to find out. Now he's saying probably not. So here's what he had to say. Probably not. All I will say is that those scenes were just to have something in the bank in case we needed to explain the continuity or time continuity if we came out first, meaning if Aquaman came out before the Flash. 
but it ended up with Lost Kingdom coming after The Flash. So when everything was changing on the leadership and everything was changing and they shuffled around some of the release dates for The Flash and Shazam and Aquaman and everything, there was a time when Aquaman was going to come out before The Flash. And then it changed and they pushed Aquaman all the way back to the end of the year. So the fact that, you know, we already knew at that time that Ben had filmed scenes for Aquaman, we're like, oh, that means, you know, no matter what happens in The Flash, Ben is still going to be Batman in Aquaman. Well, that might not be the case. So based off of what James Wan is saying, I guess maybe those scenes were because if they didn't know at the time if Aquaman was going to come out before The Flash or after, so they had to have those scenes filmed just in case it came out before The Flash. Just disappointing. I mean, once they got rid of Henry Cavill the way they did, my next thought was, we're not gonna see Ben Affleck in Aquaman 2 because if they're willing to do that to him after they allowed him to make an announcement publicly, then they're definitely not gonna keep <laughs> Ben Affleck scenes or whatever he filmed for Aquaman 2. They changed the ending of The Flash a few times and we heard about the ultra, the original endings that they had planned for that movie and what they actually ended up going with. You know, the ending of The Flash leaves no room for any promises moving forward, which I think we know that they're doing a reboot. We know that Aquaman and Lost Kingdom is the last installment of this current DC universe. We know that. We are 100% clear on the fact that <laughs> Ben Affleck's not gonna be Batman, Henry Cavill's not gonna be Superman, we know all of that. So, just let us see what was, let's let us see his scene in Aquaman. I'm pretty sure that Jason Momoa is not gonna be Aquaman either, and we're getting his whole movie. So, I mean, I know they're not, they're not gonna scrap the movie, but we, like, I think he might still continue as Lobo or something, but we know he's not gonna be Aquaman. I just, that's what I think. But we know that they're not continuing. You don't have to be like, oh, if we put them in the movie, then people are gonna expect that they're moving forward. No, we know that they're not. And Ben Affleck and Henry, like they made that very clear. We know they're not going forward in the new universe. Just let us see them while we can. Like, <sighs> it's annoying. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be a bad movie at all. I think it's gonna be a pretty good, I think it's gonna be a good movie and I'm, in, I'm looking forward to it, but I just, I knew that that was gonna happen with Ben scenes. I just, I knew it. And it's like, just let us see them while we can before this universe is over, especially since we're not getting like a proper conclusion to this universe. Then just let us see them on screen. We already know they're not moving forward. Moving on to Highlander. So not too long ago, I made a video talking about, there was kind of some, you know, updates com that came out about Henry Cavill's um, Highlander reboot and the director, and they kind of talked about like the direction they want to go with it, that it still is very much happening. And so now there's kind of another little update about it. This says the Highlander reboot starring Henry Cavill and directed by Chad Stahelski, who's the John Wick director as well, will have a $100 million budget and is aiming to begin production next year. So they are going to be starting on it very soon. And I'm excited to see kind of like some set pictures come out. I wanna see the look. I wanna see like the aesthetic that they're going with, which the director, like I said, um, in the last update that came out about it, um, he kind of mentioned that it's gonna be a little bit more grounded. There will still be fantasy elements to it, but it's going to be a little bit more grounded. You know, they are getting the ball rolling on that. So you might have seen the first image, the first look at the Snow White live action movie starring Rachel Zeg Ziegler and Gal Gadot as the evil queen. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this image. I honestly don't. <laughs> I think her costume is spot on. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to react to this. The seven dwarfs, I don't know. I think maybe that's what's throwing me off. They kind of, they just look very fake. Maybe it's the way they're all looking at her. Maybe that's what people are having a, a, a negative reaction, not negative, but like a weird reaction to. <laughs> I don't know. It looks like Snow White. I mean, it looks like Snow White. Like it, it does, but I think it's just the way they have her surrounded by them and they're staring, they're staring at her. Maybe that's what is feeling weird about. I want to see Gal Gadot as the evil queen. That's what I want to see. So I guess the first trailer was supposed to be released next month, but it's not going to anymore because the, release date has been moved back like a whole year to 2025. So 
I don't think we're gonna be getting a trailer for it anytime soon. And plus I think the quality of the image is not great. Like it has like this weird blurry look about it. And it's not just because of the aesthetic. I think it just is not a very high quality pic image. Just wanted to go ahead and share that. Share those updates, keep the, you know, keep you guys updated on things that are going on. Definitely looking forward to Netflix Geeked Week. I can't wait to see Avatar and The Last Airbender. Hope they have like a full length trailer for it. It comes out February, so I think it's a good time to have at least a teaser for it. The first look images look amazing. And I can't wait to see what they have to share for Rebel Moon, of course. So make sure to hit the notification bell, subscribe so you can stay up to date on all of that good stuff because I will be sharing and staying up to date on that on the channel too. Thank you guys for all the support. Check out the links in the description and um, you can check out the short section of my channel if you're interested in that as well. But thank you guys and we'll see you soon.